Hello, today is Wednesday, February 3rd, and this is the day we look at chapter 34 in Genesis. In chapter 34, we see the family of Jacob and his 11 sons and one daughter um, and his four, his two wives and two handmaidens travel to the city of Shechem. They travel to the city of Shechem. And what's interesting about this is that the name of the city is also the name of the son of the leader of the community. So Hamar the Hivitite, or the Hivite, Hivitite, Hivite, Hamar, is uh, the father, and his son's name is Shechem. It's the same name as the city. He um, takes a shine to Jacob's only daughter, Dina, or Dinah, depending on how you want to pronounce it, and um, lays with her by force. That's what it says there, uh, which could be interpreted as rape. So another PG-13 chapter in the book of Genesis. Lays with her by force, but then it says his this prince, this young man, Shechem, was her his soul was drawn to her. And so the fathers meet, Jacob and Hamor. And Hamor suggests that they all intermarry, that, that we just unite our daughters and your sons and your sons and our daughters, and that we create a new community together, which is kind of a nice thing. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't know if Jacob's completely opposed to that. He likes it that there's peace among the people that he's, where he's living as an alien inhabitants. So he is, um, okay. But the brothers have a meeting with Hamor, the Hivitite and Shechem. And they convince all of the male inhabitants they convince the leaders to, to make sure that all the male inhabitants of Shechem, the city of Shechem, the community there, the region, um, be circumcised like they are so that, that he can marry their sister. And they do. it says in the scripture that they do this deceitfully. Deceitfully, they create this scenario where, oh, if you all make your sign of the covenant physically so they all get all the males get circumcised in the uh, the town of Shechem and why they are still sore and recovering Simeon and Levi go to the city and kill everyone by the sword everyone they all get murdered to avenge the rape of their sister Dina and then after they're done killing everyone, the rest of the brothers go and pillage the whole place. Take everything that they can get their hands on, like a soldier after a war. But then the dad finds out what they did, and he's not happy. Jacob is very upset with them, and he is enraged. He says, um, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were getting along with me. We we were ready to, you know, be a community. And now because of these murders, once they get wind of it, we're done. Thank you for making such, sarcastically, for making such a trouble in our community for us. To which they reply, like little brats, our sister was defiled and we're angry it's not retributive justice I don't think uh, I mean it's too extreme and this story it's continuing on but this story is um, one of the big mysteries of the scripture why did the brothers go through this whole murderous act and then this pillaging as well and then you know it's almost like it's foreshadowing for what's going to happen to their brother Joseph 
The brothers are just not a nice group at all. In her novel of Midrash, Anita Diamond's book, The Red Tent, the entire novel is a Midrash of this story from the pr- point of view of Dina. So it, it tells a different story about her relationship with the son of Hamar, um, or Hamor, however you pronounce his name. Um, it tells a different story of uh, what all went down um, and how that all was. The people who wrote the story that we read are angry about what's happened. But in Anita Diamond's Midrash, she, she tells a story of love between Dina and this foreign prince. And then just bitterness at all the men being slaughtered. It's a, it's a hard story to take. And one where I, where's God in this? You know, we, we don't need God, say the brothers, especially Simeon and Levi, the murderers. We don't need God. We can take care of this ourselves. We're out for blood. We're angry. And they over they overdid it. And their father responds in kind. He loved his daughter Dina. He looked out for her. It says it there. I, however, um, an arm for a tooth. You know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. They've kind of like taken the guy's arm instead of the tooth. He took the tooth, then they took his arm. So it's sort of like an arm for a tooth situation where they've just gone overboard. And maybe it's like the affront to them is so extreme because they have this entitlement about what they deserve and what these um, Hivitites or parasites and Canaanites, how, how they are just the dirt under the feet. And they didn't, how dare they come among their people and have an encounter at all with this daughter of Jacob, whom we do not hear about until this encounter, has no agency in the whole tribe and line uh, because she's female. And, um, Her brothers mess up, and they don't apologize. They just say, well, we were justified in this. It's a little disappointing. I'm disappointed in the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm disappointed in the way their mothers raised them. Uh, I am not at the end of my disappointment with them. And so we will read on, and we will soldier on into these (sighs) escapades and situations that our ancestors in the faith have perpetrated, encountered. I mean, some of the things they can't control, but some of them they can. And they went too far. And someone took their tooth, they took an arm. So um, I would recommend Anita Diamond's Midrash on this story. Uh, the Red Tent is the title of it. So um Go forth and read read that and have a beautiful Wednesday.